about TCU or whatever, I'm sitting there like, please, don't give me that, they ain't winning no damn national championship, but stop this nonsense, they, and then when they got into the postseason, I had a problem with them being in the postseason, I had a problem with them at Ohio State, because Ohio State got romped by Michigan in the Big Ten championship game, and TCU lost to K-State, I thought Alabama should have been up in there, that's a, and two losses, I didn't care, they were narrow losses, and then when USC went and they lost to Utah twice, including getting buck rushed in that conference championship game, I was like, yeah, Alabama all day, bring them on. And by the way, yeah. that would not have happened last night to Alabama. We know this. But in the end, here's the bottom line. I was wrong. I sat up there and, 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 and TCU. Here's my thing, Keyshawn and Paul. I don't have a problem with a loss. But when you get blitzed, when you get a 
annihilated. When you get out, I, I mean, they, they ain't gonna show, I, those kids might skip the semester and the school might allow it because of how much they embarrassed themselves last night. That's how bad that beatdown was. I mean, they, 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 they can't show up on campus today. I mean, it's just bad. It's just that bad. And I will say this. Thank God college football has this 12-team playoff system coming. Because let me tell you something right now. After what we saw last night, don't think for one second that that wouldn't influence f future choices by the committee. Because right now you can make an argument that the committee owe ESPN money for having to air that last night and having people show up to watch that atrocity. I mean, no contest we're talking about. 48 to nothing over the last three quarters. It was that bad. We're going to get to that, but um, Stephen, I want to piggyback on that thought with what you just said in terms of the beatdown Georgia handed to TCU. And Key, I'll ask you to pick it up here. Do you think Georgia has replaced Alabama as the top dog in college football? I, I really, I don't. Not yet. But they are coming. They're on the heels of Nick Saban, no question about it. We keep forgetting Nick Saban did just win a championship several years ago. It's not like he won it 10 years ago, a few years ago. So I wouldn't automatically just replace uh, Alabama and put Georgia in there, but Georgia and Kirby Smarter on the heels of Nick Saban, no question about it. Two in a row. They, the last time that happened was in the BCS era in 2011-2012 with Alabama. If he goes next year, and let's say he plays against Alabama, and he beats Alabama in the national championship, that would be three in a row. When you look at his resume since coming over from Alabama as defensive coordinator to Georgia as a head coach, unstoppable. Unstoppable. He's been in three championship games in the CFP, I mean the CFB, in, in five seasons in three championship games. So how, how can you complain about what he's done and what Georgia's done? But Alabama's still showing you they can, Paul, they can go out and, and get the number one recruiting class in the country this year. They went out and got the number one recruiting class. So I'll wait and hold a little bit before I just say Georgia's the cream of the crop in college football. Well, Keyshawn, as far, you're right. Alabama had an epic recruiting class. Uh, so did Jimbo Fisher a year ago. He had the best recruiting class of all time, and he had a losing record. That is not always an indicator. You need number one recruiting classes, but the most important thing is you have to keep up, keep them on your roster. Now, guys, I, I, I don't want to be the heel here uh, after the beginning of this show, but, but I don't know what either one of you guys are smoking to think that Georgia isn't the king of college football today. I don't know what else they have to do. You mentioned them playing in the national championship game in the 2017 season. They didn't just play in it. They lost in overtime on a Tua to Devontae Smith walk-off. Uh, against Alabama. Alabama won in the COVID year, but, but Stephen A., you talked about how this is, you know, beatdowns like this don't happen to good teams. Yes, they do. Remember four years ago? Do you remember Clemson beating Alabama by 28 points? That's, that's Nick Saban here. And, and no one is trying to run Nick Saban off. He is a, he's a phenomenal coach. He's the GOAT. He, he's the best of all time. But he's the number two coach in the country right now behind Kirby Smart. And, and that is inescapable in my mind. And I watch this every day, guys. Uh, and, and, and I don't know really uh, what you're waiting for. Nick Saban has won one national championship in the past five years. That's not really a dynasty. He had a dynastic run when, when he won six since he was hired, uh, six since 2009. But right now, the program has stepped back. It's not, it hasn't stepped back much. Stephen A., I, I, I'm, I agree with your, your premise that maybe they deserve to be in, maybe they didn't. They're, they're, they're one of the top three teams in the country right now, but they, 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 they lost to LSU. They, 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 found them, they, they talked themselves out of going as opposed to earning their way in. The blasphemy. The blasphemy. That's coming out of your mouth, right? Here. The blasphemy. You and that damn David Pollock who I love, but how dead I mean to, to have Nick Saban sit right next to you and to say something like that. I didn't know what to do with myself, but then I caught myself because this is a three-time All-American at Georgia. So I understand and I love my man Pollock, but I was like, oh my lord, the blasphemy. I can't believe the words coming out of his mouth. And you, the mouth of the South, I would remind you that Nick Saban has won three national titles in the last eight years. I would remind you okay. that in 2020, they just won a national title. Now, I understand that Georgia is the king of the, is, is the, king of the, uh, king of the crop right now. They the, right, they the not two times for the national champions. I would remind you in that SEC championship game last year, Nick Saban took them out. Mechie goes down, okay? And then in the national championship game, Williams goes down. They were 
sleep for a second. When I think about Patrick Mahomes, we used to talk about Aaron Rodgers. I'm not talking, I'm not talking about Aaron Rodgers that we just saw. All right, God bless him. I'm talking about the greatness of Aaron Rodgers. We saw that over a sustained period of time. And we said no matter what we see from Patrick Mahomes, let's see it over a sustained period of time. George is the national, the reigning two-time defending national champions. Major props to the Kirby Smart, exceptional coach, big-time program. I got all of that. But are you going to do this over a sustained period of time? I think Alabama's going to have something to say about yeah, that. Yeah, I, I would say I would say Georgia, Stephen, I would say Georgia is probably going to do it over a sustained period of time. He's been, doing it. He's, been, take it. he's been doing it since he took over the program. They've been in the mix. Every in year the they've been in the mix. And I just don't think when you look at where they're at right now and where Alabama is, we're making it sound like Alabama, at least you are, Paul, making it sound like Alabama no, went from no, one. No. Went from, yeah, you are. You're making it sound like they went from one to 19. That's, that's how you make it sound. No, I didn't. And that's like not the yes. George's love. I'm telling you, that's how you're making it sound, though. My ears are telling me you make it sound like that program is dead. That's the way you make it sound. That, that, that's absurd. I mean, that is probably no, absurd. Uh, I, I, I'm not saying anything of the sort. I'm just simply being, I'm, I'm living in the real world. And you guys want to talk about Nick Saban. How has he done without Kirby Smart as his defensive corner? Yeah, he beat Kirby Smart, and then he won yes. a, a title in COVID. But the program has slept. We're not, we're not talking about falling off the face of the earth. We're talking about a, a fraction. And right now, a fraction means everything in college football. We just got through watching a 58-point win by Georgia. And by the way, it would have been 59, but the, the Georgia kicker missed the extra point at the end. That's how crazy this game was. I realize most most of you have fallen asleep by this point. Yes. But in, in no way am I writing you, Saber. I was just simply saying we are seeing a changing of the guard, and that matters. The fact that we're even talking about somebody possibly being better today than Nick Saban is a major paradigm shift. He so owns the sport, Keyshawn. You know that. He doesn't what, own what it anymore. Stop? What will stop the that? changing of the guard then? Uh, what will stop, Paul, the changing of the guard? Does Alabama need to win a national championship next year? Do they need to beat Georgia in the SEC well, championship? I would say, I would say it's a good idea uh, if you want to stop this. I mean, right now, Georgia will start next season number one. They'll be a heavy four. favorite. That's what we used to say about Alabama every single year. Okay, that's fine. And one more thing, guys. You want to one more thing, guys. I mean, you guys know this better than I do. Okay. But CBA, the last four Alabama quarterbacks, you know who they are? They're Jalen Hurts, Tua, Mac Jones, and Bryce Young, who just won the Heisman and may be the What's first player chosen. What's we have point no that? idea who the quarterback's going to be next okay, year. Okay, that's fine. You know what? I didn't have an idea who the hell Bryce Young was, but I know who he is now. I didn't have an idea who Mac Jones was, but I know who he is now. I didn't have a, I didn't have a snowball chance in hell of knowing who the hell Tua Tagovailoa was, but he was pulled off the bench and won a national championship. All right, after they were wet in the bed in the first half against Georgia, by the way. Let me tell you something, all right? Nick Saban, do not underestimate Alabama. Don't underestimate that man. I understand Kirby Smart is the man right now. He's the reigning two-time defending national champions. He deserves all the props in the world after putting in his nine years under Nick Saban and learning from that level of greatness and having that sprinkled down upon him. He has capitalized off of it. He deserves the respect. against a, a program like LSU who fired a coach last year. Listen, I, I realize that, that debate is over, but Molly, back to your question. I think Georgia is going to win. Now, is going to be the favorite, and I think they'll win. And, and uh, maybe a year from today, if we're also fortunate to still be sitting here, uh, and Stephen A. Stephen A. will still be arguing that Nick Saban's the GOAT. I mean, yes. Stephen A., I'm sorry. Uh, yes. I, I, mean, what, what I, I love Coach no Saban, debate. too. Do, the great Paul Fireball. Did she tell you that? Did she tell you at the top of the show saying that Nick Saban is the GOAT, that he's the greatest of all time? You started off your soliloquy by saying that. So don't knock me for saying it. And by the way, speaking of Georgia, okay, props to them. Reigning national champions, they deserve it. I can't stand down on that. 
But you know what? If the kick the far house did have done his job, you wouldn't even been there last night. So you don't well, don't act like, oh my lord, okay. excuse me, it's, it, this is true. It's true. It is true. I mean, how many videos I'm just You're saying that right now. Yeah, I think I think the spit okay. Alabama is the thing. You know what, Keyshawn, Keyshawn, Stephen A's, it's ball control because he's feeling uncomfortable. In the I'm not. He's a little defensive right now. Pass the ball, man, damn.